You don't need to have been paying much attention to the news to notice that the US government, and more specifically Donald Trump, has been in a trade war with China recently. It might seem a little weird for us to call out the president here, but it does seem like it's a really personal battle for him. Something we'll explain later in the video. So today, let's explain the trade war, what's happened so far, and if Trump has just signalled that it might be coming to an end. Before we do though, I just wanted to let you know that this video was originally posted on TLDR News US. We're sharing the first US videos on both channels, but soon it'll be just over on the US channel. To make sure you don't miss anything, please subscribe to TLDR News US. There's a link to that channel in the description. Please do subscribe, it would mean a lot to us. The US-China trade war is centred around tariffs, which both sides are slapping on each other's goods. So let's take a moment to explain what tariffs are. A tariff is a tax applied by one country on the imports from another country. For example, there's a 10% tariff on US-made cars sold in the EU. So if a US car producer, let's say Chevrolet, makes a car that in the US costs $30,000 per unit, and then decides they want to sell that car abroad in Europe, it will then have to pay 10% of the cost of the car to the EU, so $3,000 per unit. This money is collected by the EU and then shared between member states. Often, in order to offset the added cost of a tariff, the producer will just make the car more expensive. So, for example, Chevrolet will sell the car in the EU for $33,000. That way, they can maintain their profit margins while still paying the tariff. This essentially means that the consumer is paying for the tariff. Although Chevrolet might struggle to sell as many cars when competing against European car manufacturers who don't have to artificially increase their prices. Arguably, the only people who benefit from these sort of taxes are local producers, like the European car manufacturers, who now don't have to worry so much about American competition. This is why tariffs are often described as protectionist, because they protect local industries. So that's what a tariff is, but why are we talking about them in this video? Well, since he's been elected, Trump has brought in more and more tariffs on just about everything and everyone. It's never been made 100% clear why he's raising these tariffs, but it's definitely related to the American trade deficit, a topic Trump talks about at length. Put simply, the US is the biggest consumer market in the world, which means it buys more stuff from other countries than they buy from the US. This creates what's known as a trade deficit. For example, loads of people in the US want lots of cheap stuff from China, but there's far less demand in China for American goods. Americans spend some $540 billion on Chinese goods each year, while the Chinese only buy $120 billion of US goods. Therefore, the US has a $320 billion trade deficit with China. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, nor is it a China-specific thing. America has a trade deficit in goods with basically every country in the world. In fact, this might be a good thing. Consumers buying lots of stuff, even if that stuff is Chinese, is normally symptomatic of a healthy, growing economy. We're not going to dive deep into the pros and cons of trade deficits in this video, but even if we accept Trump's logic that they're a bad thing, tariffs probably aren't the best way to go about lowering the deficit. That's because while tariffs might discourage American consumers from buying so many Chinese goods, they also make American exports less competitive, for two reasons. Firstly, without the pressure of cheaper Chinese producers, American producers become less competitive, making goods more expensive. Secondly, tariffs often invite retaliatory tariffs, which can eventually escalate into what's known as a trade war. For example, Trump initially imposed tariffs on $250 billion worth of Chinese goods, and then the Chinese retaliated by applying tariffs to $120 billion worth of US goods. This means that US producers will now struggle to export some of their goods to China. So, even if the tariffs do mean that the US buys less from China, it also means that China and others will likely buy less from the US, which means the trade deficit doesn't necessarily go down. So, if tariffs don't necessarily help with the trade deficit, why else might Trump be imposing tariffs? Well, there are definitely other advantages to protecting local industries, especially when it comes to national security. Trump has imposed tariffs on 25% of steel exports to the US, with some exemptions for South Korea, Argentina, Australia, and Brazil. While this will make steel exports more expensive for American consumers, it does protect the American steel industry, who were previously being undercut by super cheap Chinese steel. Protecting US steel could be important for national security, because in the event of a war which stopped trade between China and the US, the US would still need a functioning domestic steel industry. 
However, this national security explanation only accounts for security relevant imports, like steel. However, Trump imposes tariffs on all sorts of things, from important metals to whiskey. So what's the rationale for those other tariffs? Well, sometimes tariffs can be used as political leverage. Lots of countries rely on the US to buy their stuff, because the US is essentially the biggest consumer market in the world. These other countries are therefore scared that tariffs might cripple their economies, as they'd effectively lose access to their biggest consumer market. Because of this fear, Trump has used the threat of tariffs to get completely unrelated concessions from other countries. For example, a couple months back, Trump threatened Mexico with a 5% tariff on all imports if they didn't help stem the migrant flows from Central America into the US. According to Trump, at least, Mexico buckled under the threat of these tariffs and agreed to cooperate. Ultimately, though, the most persuasive explanation is probably that tariffs and protecting local industries are politically a good look for Trump. Lots of voters see Trump's tariffs and the international frenzy over them as America showing the world who's boss, making America great again. Also, protecting local industries is a good look for politicians more generally. Politicians dream of steel workers and farmers going on TV and thanking them for protecting honest working class jobs, even if the tariffs that protect them ultimately cost the average American more. After all, dry economic analysis of changing consumer prices are far less likely to make the news than clips of traditional workers in manufacturing jobs eternally grateful to Trump for protecting their factories. However, Trump still needs to be careful of the impact on the average American. And because of this potential economic impact to individuals, Trump has attempted to ensure that the tariffs he imposed don't affect the everyday American. Remember the $250 billion worth of Chinese goods that the US slapped tariffs on? Well, those goods have been carefully chosen. The goods selected are the kinds of things that companies would buy rather than the Chinese products that the average person would regularly purchase. This is a good way of keeping the impact of the trade war away from the ordinary people, and more importantly for Trump, away from the voters. Coming into the 2020 election season, Trump certainly doesn't want it to look like he's making costs higher for everyday Americans. Despite these efforts, tariffs have already begun to impact people. When you look at the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, for the consumer products that have already been affected in the trade war, you can see a significant spike since the implementation of these tariffs. This shows that where tariffs have already been rolled out, consumers in the US are already starting to pay more. This was set to become even worse at the beginning of September, when Trump was supposed to increase tariffs and introduce them to more consumer products. These new tariffs would affect $350 billion worth of Chinese goods, Essentially, all of the goods that weren't already being targeted by tariffs. This might sound like an exaggeration. Surely the tariffs can't apply to everything. But there's a 122-page document listing all of the goods these tariffs would affect, and there's a link to that in the description below. After this round of tariffs, essentially all Chinese goods would have tariffs placed on them, which means protecting US citizens from the impact of a trade war becomes almost impossible. Trump actually admitted this for the first time on Tuesday, saying that it wasn't just China who was bearing the brunt of the trade war, and that it was also affecting US consumers. We're doing this for the Christmas season, just in case some of the tariffs would have an impact on US customers, which so far they've had virtually none. The only impact has been that we've collected almost $60 billion from China, compliments of China. But just in case they might have an impact on people, what we've done is we've delayed it so that they won't be relevant for the Christmas shopping season. This statement from Trump isn't completely true. The $60 billion figure appears very exaggerated, with the Customs and Border Protection Agency saying that it's more like $24 billion, significantly lower than Trump's estimate. However, he is right to acknowledge the additional impact that this round of tariffs would have, putting tariffs on consumer goods like toys and electronic devices. Though the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco disagrees with his last line, estimating that tariffs have already caused inflation rates to increase by 0.1%, going on to predict that this new phase would increase that to 0.3%, a fairly significant rise. So because of the impact on Americans, especially during the holiday season, Trump has said that these tariffs will be delayed to December. Some see this as Trump blinking in negotiations, and possibly as a signal that he wants a trade war to end. But that being said, this isn't him cancelling the tariffs, merely delaying them. So while Trump is obviously scared to upset voters, he isn't quite ready to call the whole thing off just yet. If you've enjoyed this video and want to support TLDR News US going forward, there's a few ways you can do that. You can drop us a follow across a number of social platforms, helping us out and getting you some additional content. 
You can find us by searching for TLDR News. You can also check out our exclusive TLDR US merch store, where on top of the normal TLDR merch that we've had out for a little bit, we also have some US specific designs, including various states with shoes designs. There's a link to the store down below. That actually leads on nicely to the last thing you could do to help us. The states we selected for the merch were in part selected by our Patreon backers. We have a Patreon account where you can support TLDR, both US and UK. By donating there, you support the channels as well as getting exclusive perks like the ability to vote on video topics, exclusive live streams, behind the scenes podcasts and much more. To learn more about what you can get, head over to patreon.com forward slash TLDR news. So that's almost enough plugging for now, but make sure you subscribe if you want to be updated on the trade war and everything else we cover. Oh, and if you do want your name at the end of the video, just like these people, then that's another perk of being a Patreon backer. Again, there's a link to that down below.